Hi everyone, Crystal Chester here, functional and clinical dietitian. Thank you for tuning in again. If you've never been here, well, thanks for popping in. <laughs> this is a story about how to dissolve gallstones naturally. I was 19 and when I had my first gallbladder attack, I thought I was dying. It hurt so bad. Maybe it's because I just never experienced that kind of pain before, but I remember being like, somebody help me now. I went to the emergency room, they did some tests, and the doctor said, just go home. It's gas. It's really deep gas. Really deep gas? Man, I've had gas before, and there's no way gas can be that painful, but whatever. Whatever you say. <laughs> so I went back home and about a week later rose that radiating, super painful feeling in my abdomen. And I was like, I just need to go to my primary care. So I went there, he did some scans, said, you have gallstones. We need to take your gallbladder out. It's like, okay, whatever. But what vexes me is that nobody ever told me that if it's not life-threatening, you can actually do things naturally to dissolve the gallstones, to remove the gallstones, and that the gallbladder is needed. Yes, you can live without it. Yes, the liver will still make bile. You can still digest fat, but I have impaired fat metabolism now. I have to limit how much fat I take because I don't have that little storage pocket, the little gallbladder anymore. I have to take digestive enzymes. I gotta do all these things. If you already have your gallbladder removed, check out my video about what you need to know after the surgery. But this is the video that I've been wanting to make to help educate people that if your gallbladder disease is not life-threatening, then you can do things to dissolve the gallstones and you can avoid surgery. But first, caution, caution, caution. When gallstones form and when those bile components enlarge and create a stone and they block like the common bile duct or the cystic bile duct, it can become life-threatening. That's an emergency situation and you should take emergency measures. That's this is not protocol for an emergency. Now, if your doctor says that your gallbladder disease is not life-threatening, that your gallstones can um, possibly dissolve, then you can take more of a holistic approach. Then you can look at working towards dissolving them naturally. Let's start with diet, of course. Now, studies show that a vegetarian diet is most effective at dissolving gallstones. If you're a super meat eater, it might be hard. And when I say vegetarian, I don't mean that you be grain-based. We're talking vegetables. You need lots and lots of vegetables. The diet needs to be low fat, no sugar, no refined sugar, and no caffeine, coffee or other caffeine beverages. There are things like dandelion greens you can add or beet greens that you can add that will help increase and improve the flow of bile from the liver, which can help support the healing process. Now, along with the vegetarian diet, it's highly recommended that you do a gallbladder flush, AKA liver flush. And that is a three-day fast, it starts with a three-day fast of olive oil and lemon. And then it goes into a six-day fast where you keep going with the olive oil and lemon, but then you add carrot, beet, cucumber juice, as well as potassium broth containing carrots, spinach, celery, and parsley. The liquid should be drank all day, four to five times, even six times a day with lots and lots and lots of water. Also including enemas with coffee enemas, garlic, wheatgrass can really help the cleansing process. When they say flush, they mean flush. <laughs> After the fast, then you really just need to go back to that vegetarian alkaline based diet with a lot of sea vegetables and green juices that contain chlorella, barley grass, and spirulina. 
All these things just help support the function and the health of your gallbladder and your liver. Remember, it's easier to prevent gallstones than it is to get rid of them. So if you're prone to gallstones, don't just go back to your old way of life. Make sure you are getting in lots of vegetables, lots of nutrients, lots of green juices to help your gallbladder and your liver thrive. Let's talk supplements for just a second. Now, if you have gallstones, sometimes people with gallstones have low hydrochloric acid, so you need to get that checked. If you have low hydrochloric acid, you need to look, in, take, look into taking a HCL supplement. That will help with all over digestion, not just with your gallbladder or your liver. And lipotropic supplements, which include omega-3, choline and flaxseed oil, even up to three times a day after your gallbladder flush. Now, one thing to note is that the liver and the gallbladder, you can kind of tell from what we've been talking about, they work as a team in many different ways. So when you're trying to improve the health of your gallbladder, you're also gonna be improving the health of your liver. And that kind of goes with all things that go with go on with our body. You can't just focus on one organ or one body part. When you focus on one, the whole body is gonna benefit from it, which is really a bonus. It's also a good idea to take bitter herbs to help the liver. And milk thistle, there's not really a better herb out there than milk thistle to just help the life and the health of your, of your liver. Now, lastly, we've talked about what you should do, how long you should do it, what supplements to take, but I wanted you to note that there are some foods that have been shown to aggravate gallbladder disease. They are eggs, onion, pork, and dairy products. Sugar has been shown to aggravate in some people. That's just going to that's just going to be from person to person, but even not just refined sugar, but also natural sugars too. I've had patients before who have eaten something that has, is not on any gallbladder aggravation list and it bothered them. So it'll really just be something you have to, you know, be in tune to your body about and listen to that. Okay, bottom line, for most people who have gallstones, they can dissolve them naturally as long as it's not in a emergency situation or it's not life threatening. I cannot stress enough how one should avoid removing organs unless it's absolutely necessary. Ask your physician, ask your healthcare providers, ask them questions. A lot of times in the hospital or just in a fast place environment, they don't think to tell you all the other options. We have to ask. So ask your healthcare provider, ask around, what can you do to avoid surgery especially removing organs, okay? Thank you for watching this far. Please give it a like. Please subscribe it, share it with people. I love talking to you guys in the comments, so give me whatever questions you have down below. I'll catch you in the comments. I'll catch you next time. Have a blessed day.